Hi, I'm Mallory Drummond, and tonight we are at an event hosted by Queen Anne's Drug Free Coalition. There are over 30 vendors here tonight. Fred went around and talked to each of them, and I got to take a tour of a mock bedroom of a teenager set up by the sheriff's office to teach parents what to look for in their teenagers' bedrooms. So we are here in a mock bedroom of a teenager that the Queen Anne's County Sheriff's Department set up. And can you tell us uh, why you guys set this up? We are trying to... I guess get parents and guardians of juveniles, give them a kind of a rough idea of what you might find in um, a juvenile's room. A lot of times you can see things on the outside, but it's the things that are hidden that are a little bit on the dangerous side. And we just kind of want people to kind of think outside the box, want parents to know that they can go into their own house in their kid's room and look around and see what, they're, uh, um, what they've got inside. And can you show us a few things that you've found that kids can hide stuff in? Certainly. Certainly. Over here we have um, your nightstand, but a lot of times what we have found um, when we have been asked by parents or whatnot to go into people's rooms is um, drug paraphernalia. Um, this particular thing is a, is, is a spoon that has been used to smoke heroin, um, to cook heroin with. We've got syringes also in here. Um, in addition to that, we have underneath the underneath the bed and some other places, we have found what are um, referred to now, I guess, as vape pens. Um, most people obviously use them, kind of wean themselves off of, of uh, nicotine and cigarettes. Um, but we have unfortunately found out that a lot of people, young and old, are using them to smoke marijuana. Um, in addition to that, I also have just your regular run-of-the-mill um, game. The reason that we put this together was a couple of years ago we found out that kids unfortunately in the high schools and middle schools were using the games to sell drugs back and forth in the schools. Um, which, which, which what the, the adults and whatnot always thought was just the regular selling of a, of a, you know, a popular game like Halo or something like that when in reality they found out that it's, there's, there's drugs involved with it. That was how they were transporting so, them? Exactly. And the unfortunate and part of this, you know, it's, you can't necessarily stop every young person that is selling a game or something like that. It, there's nothing illegal about it. There's no probable cause to kind of search any further than that. Um, over here, um, we've got just a handful of things here. This looks just like your regular everyday chapstick. Mm -hmm. I keep one of these in my pocket all, all the time. However, a lot of people use it to transport mm -hmm. things. Um, we also have just a regular Sharpie pen. Now this is an actual real Sharpie pen. Um, however, what we have found out that, remember years and years ago, people used to smoke the highlighter, or not smoke the highlighters. Um, inhale it. Inhale it, yes, yeah, sniff it. Well, I found out you can go online and you can actually get a Sharpie or a highlighter and that actually writes. It actually works just the way a highlighter is supposed to. However, if you unscrew it, it's either a container, hollow. and in, in some cases, yeah, hollow, and in some cases, unfortunately, you, you dig a little bit further, it's an actual smoking device in and of itself. So, gotta, love, gotta love the internet. <laughs> gotta love the internet. Okay, well, thank you so much for talking with us about this thing you set up. You're, th you're welcome. Hi, I'm Fred McNeil. I've got a real treat with you. I've got the right family here, right? And we've got the whole family. I got Warren and I got Kathy. Warren retired Board of Ed. Kathy, congratulations. You retired officially today. today. Yes, sir. And you got a new job already. Yes, sir. All right. How about Warren? I'll start with you. Tell us about this town meeting we're at here tonight. This, uh, thanks, you know, and you kind of were involved in the beginning 14 years ago when we started. And uh, Kathy and I have been members all 14 years. Um, and the purpose, of course, of the Drug Free Coalition is to do as many preventative things as we can for kids to prevent drug and alcohol use and abuse. Uh, tonight is, I think tonight is our biggest function um, in our 14 year and history. And great crowd, great crowd. Yeah, thank yes. you. And having you come, Fred, that's kind of a plus too. Well, thank uh, you. Having the county commissioners here, that's kind of nice. You never said that, Kathy, you never said that. We worked together for 30 <laughs> years, you never said a nice word. Well, shut up. We're on TV, I, you know, I try okay. to put you're, lying. you're lying, you're lying, you're yeah. lying. Okay. Right. So with Kathy retiring and me retiring, um, we have in the Drug Free Coalition currently some of the greatest volunteers and that's why we've been able to accomplish so much. The other part is, and you always say that, 
the agencies in Queen Anne's County work together. It's great. I yeah. mean, the sheriff's office is over there talking now. The Board of Ed is always helpful. You've got helpful. the superintendent of schools here. You've got Jeff Strait, the yeah, art well, director. Well, some things are more positive That's than true, others. That's true. Uh, but oh. you're right. Jeff always we is great. Jeff. He's a big uh, supporter. He's a big Jeff. supporter. Juvenile Services is under kind of new management. They're great, great to work with, and we've been working together all over the last two or three years, more so than ever. What's really exciting about the DFC is uh, we are getting so successful, we're sort of struck out on our own, uh, as opposed to being associated with another group. And uh, um, so we're kind of excited about that. And the good things that we've done, not to brag, even though I'm the chairperson, it's only because... Uh, Kathy, you did all the work. <laughs> I, know, I, know, I know how it works. She does all the work. And, um, but the group makes, the, makes our group successful, and we're going to do some other things that we're going on. Yeah, this is great. Now, Kathy, how about tell people if they couldn't make it tonight, what all is going on tonight? You've had, what, over, looks like 30 different tables. We have out. over 30 different vendors tonight that have come to share the information about their treatment programs here on the Eastern Shore, whether it be the health department out patient programs, whether it be methadone maintenance programs, um, cigarette restitution programs, recovery programs, all different kinds of vendors here. So and the people great can get free literature. coming out at night like tonight. Coming out tonight in this horrible rain with the impending hurricane that's coming. Um, they all come set up tables. We have over 150 people here we've counted tonight. So we're, we're thrilled. We would have loved it to have been 350. But Mother Nature, but didn't, Mother help Nature didn't help us. And we're really thrilled that these people care enough about this drug problem in Queen Anne's County, that they're willing to take time to come hear some of our fabulous speakers that we have this evening. Now, Kathy, speaking of speakers, we can hear the voices in the mm -hmm. auditorium now. Who's speaking? Who is actually speaking? Um, now? Give Doc me a couple examples. Dr. Aftora um, with the Emergency Medical System for the state of Maryland, he just spoke. Um, currently, Warden Lamont Cook is speaking. Our, um, uh, county Commissioner spoke at first, Jim Moran, Jim Moran our president. Did he did the intro. So, uh, Sergeant Sonny Jones from the Sheriff's Office is kind of moderating the entire thing. Um, Lance Richardson, our state's attorney, is here. He's speaking, or he's already spoken. We have another doctor um, from Annapolis that's going to be talking about Suboxone, Dr. Lee Goodman. We have um, Anna. Anna who is a recovering heroin addict that is speaking. So to me, every, she's the most important person in the room. Good speaker, yeah. Because she, she's got the story. She's been there. She's done it. We have Lieutenant Tim McDonald of the Maryland, Maryland State Police, which he'll tell his story of um, how he had to shoot someone that was hooked on heroin um, and what that was like and, and how he had to experience that. We have Joe Gravis from Juvenile Services. He's going to speak to the parents of what to do, what not to do. We have our drug room that parents are um, able to go in to find drugs and Which paraphernalia. Which was pretty amazing. As Which, yeah. we saw that, that yeah. was amazing. What you so, can hide in socks and desk drawers. Absolutely. Right? Places parents would never think of looking. So we're just trying to increase the awareness in our community, get people talking about it, get people involved. The college has already said to me, I've got the business card in my pocket. Talk to actually talked to Sonny Jones and said, we want to sponsor, we want to help with things like this, we'll help with advertising great, next year. Great. We can hold it at the college, we'll help with everything to help have so this be an just opening event. door after door. We're which trying is great. to, yes. Well, look at it. We don't want anybody yeah. dying. No. The thing, the concern, Fred, is right now with the uh, the marijuana and the legislation to build the uh, marijuana, medical marijuana, uh, e cigarettes. The cigarette companies say that by the end of the decade, they'll make more money off of e cigarettes than they will tobacco. In this country, they still sell internationally. There are some big things happening, and we need to make everybody aware. And with your help, I mean, it certainly doesn't hurt. Well, look, I know the whole community thanks you all, right, for not only almost, what, four, how many years, Board of Ed? Um, I remember, uh, 38, I 38. Believe. Kathy, how many years, Health Department? 32. Okay, for all the years you've given Thank us, you. and you continue doing great service in the community. Kathy, good luck. You're going to have Thank to put you. up with this man now 24-7. <laughs> You're an angel, okay? Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you for doing this. Thank you, ACTV, for everything they do. Um, the Board of Education, Jeff's helped us film a lot of different events over the years. He comes for we the, really, Kathy, he comes for the food. I gotta, I gotta <laughs> tell you the secret. Okay. Uh, we really appreciate this. This is the kind of cooperation we get. Everybody came out for this event tonight, and so we, thank you. And we appreciate you all. Thanks Great. a lot. Thanks. Hi, I'm here with Trish from MCF. Trish, tell us all about your job and MCF. Hi. Um, 
Hi, I'm a family navigator in Caroline County. We have navigators all across the eastern shore, actually through the state of Maryland. Um, we're a peer support organization, so we are actually providing support to parents in the community that have children that have behavioral health needs, that's substance abuse and mental health needs, um, in finding services and resources for their for their children. Okay, thanks for coming out tonight. Thank you. Appreciate now we're here with Tom and Michelle from Christian Shield Ministry. Thanks for being with us tonight. Michelle, thank you. Now tell us all about the Christian Shield Ministry. Um, Christian Shield Ministry was a group that we started to deal with the local heroin epidemic. Um, it's a group of churches, that, and our core group is a group of churches that get, join together to try to provide services. Um, we have a Celebrate Recovery meeting that we started um, a year and a half ago at the Next Generation Church in Denton. Um, we also do outreach um, assemblies in the firehouses, and we also assist people in getting to the rehabs. Um, we, we try to give them the information. They obviously have to go themselves, but we're, we will transport them. Some of, so many of them don't have um, transportation, so that's what we do. Sounds right. A great organization. Thank you for coming out in this terrible rainy night. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, now I'm with Kathy from Celebrate Recovery. Kathy, thanks for being with us, and tell us all about Celebrate Recovery. Thank you for having us. Um, Celebrate Recovery is a faith-based, non-denominational non faith-based um, a ministry. It's similar to AA or NA. We do the 12 steps, but we also follow the eight principles, which follow the um, scripture of Matthew and the Beatitudes. But what this is, it's um, it's a program for any hurt, hang up, or habit. It's not just for addiction. It's for codependency. It's for depression, anxiety, any type of issue that needs to get to the core of why the issue is there. Um, that's what this ministry helps. So it's a widespread umbrella ministry that's for any type of hurt. Hang on. Located on Ken Island in Queen We're on County? Ken Island at Ken Island United Methodist Church. Okay, and get in touch with you, how do they do that? Um, uh, you can get in touch with me at Kathy Timms at msn.com or you can go to www.celebraterecovery.org and um, you can go to the locations and it's all types of locations. We're on there under Ken Island United Methodist Church. Thank you. And TV wasn't that bad, was it? No. no. <laughs> now I'm with Lisa. Lisa is with Eastern Shore Psychological Services. Lisa, thanks a million for being Thank with us. Thank you so much. Now tell us all about Eastern Shore Psychological Services. Eastern Shore Psychological Services is an outpatient mental health clinic. We have locations all over the Eastern Shore, including Easton, Maryland, uh, Queen Anne's, Salisbury. Our programs range from outpatient mental health services, substance abuse counseling, PRP programs, a very extensive school-based program in Talbot County. And so we have a lot of opportunities for people in search of a variety of different services. Lisa, if people want to get in touch with you, is there a website or an email? Uh, there is a website, but you can locate uh, or call the Easton office at 410-822-5007. And one more time, please. Eastern Shore Psychological Services. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Now I'm here with Midshore Mental Health. I've got Megan, one of their spokesmen. Megan, thank you very much for having us today. Thank you. Now tell us all about Midshore Mental Health. Midshore Mental Health is the local mental health authority. We kind of sit between the state, Behavioral Health Administration, Department of Me Mental Health and Hygiene, and the outpatient providers. Okay. Um, so we're given some funding to help promote different services within the community. We help connect consumers and the community to resources that they might need. Um, we field a lot of help calls for difficult um, cases that people may run into. So that's pretty much okay. what we do. If, if people want to get in touch with you, is there a phone number or a website? Or email. Absolutely. Um, they can go to midshorementalhealthsystems.org or they can call us at 410-770-4801. Okay, Megan, thank you. And you, thank I you. want you to know you have the best pens here tonight. <laughs> Wonderful. That's thank what we're you. aiming for. <laughs> I'm here with Elaine from Community Partnership for Children and Families. Elaine, you have my favorite name. I've been calling that name oh, for at least 40 years, I'm my sure wife. Your, I know your wife. She taught my children also. Okay, was she a good teacher? Yes, absolutely. Well, good. Both loved her, yeah. Thank you very much. Tell us a little bit about Community Community Partnership for Children and Families? Well, we're um, uh, with the Department of Social Services, and we uh, actually, I'm the character counts coordinator for, and I fall under the umbrella of the um, Community Partnership. It's another partnership. hat you wear, right? It's the hat, it's the hat I wear. It's the only hat I wear, really. Um, but I hope we fall under that umbrella. I'm just newly the coordinator for the county, and we go to the, 
Thank you. Uh, we go into the classroom. We're always looking for coaches from the community to I'm volunteer. Doing two classes, you guys told me this year. I'm sorry, what? I'm doing two classes. Wonderful. Here, that's what they tell me. Okay. What school? Kennard. Okay, great. I was a coach for seven years, loved it. So when the, the position became available, I jumped right on it, and I'm just very enthusiastic about it. We go into the classroom, we look for volunteers to go into the classroom and commit for 15 minutes a week uh, to talk about once a month each one of the six pillars. And it only requires 15 minutes of uh, it's a lot of fun. volunteer. It's a, it's a lot of fun. I loved it, especially the younger children. They absorb it, and you really do make an impact in their lives. Now, so. Elaine, if they want to, if they say, hey, you know what, I think I'd like to be a character counts coach or get in touch with you, how do they do that? Well, um, I have a brochure here with my contact information on it, but I'm, I am with the Department of Community Services. We're right in Centerville, um, and you can reach us at 410-758-6677, or my email address is ebutler at qac.org. So, well, thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Okay. I'm here with Mindy. Mindy's representing Big Brothers and Big Sisters. Mindy, thanks for being with us today. Thank you. Now, tell us all about Big Brothers and Big Sisters. Well, we're a local mentor program um, we have we take children in the area that need a little extra support and we match them with our volunteer mentors that are screened and background check and our mentors spend time with the children and um, help to provide that extra support that they need great many if someone wants to contact you or big brothers and big sisters how will they do that they can call me personally my number is 443-783-2581 and find out more about the program great well thanks for coming out on a not a very pleasant night okay? <laughs> No, I'm Thank hoping the weather gets better. It's going to get better. Thank you, Mindy. <laughs> Thank you. I'm here with Rebecca from Anne Arundel Counseling. Rebecca, thank you for being with us. Now, Absolutely. Tell thank us you. all about Anne Arundel Counseling. Wonderful. Thank you so much for having me. So Anne Arundel Counseling, we provide substance abuse and mental health services for children, adolescents, and adults. We offer those services through individual family and group counseling. Here in Queen Anne's County, we have two offices, an office in Centerville and also an office in Stevensville, Maryland. Great. Rebecca, they want to contact contact you or your offices, how would they do that? Sure, it's very easy. We have one main number, and that is 410-768-5988, and we're also available at AnnaRundleCounseling.com. Okay, thank you very much. Hi, I'm here with John from Dorchester County Addictions Program. John, thank you for being with us. Glad to be here this now, evening. Now, tell us all about your services. Well, we I oversee the Dorchester County Addictions Program, which is an outpatient program. We do assessments and referrals on an outpatient basis, refer inpatient as needed, folks with heroin, all kinds of drugs of addiction. But I also oversee the Dry Dock Recovery and Wellness Center. Okay, you're which a busy is, man. Uh, busy. We're very busy. We're right on Route 50 in Cambridge, and we offer free recovery support for anyone that has an addiction or mental health. Many folks have are uh, suffering from both, so we support them in any way that's going to help their recovery efforts. That's great. John, if they want to get in touch is there a phone number or a website they can Ab call? Absolutely. They could go to drydoc.org or they could call 410-228-7714. Great. John, thank you very much. Thank you so much. Okay. Hi, I'm here with Gary now. Gary's from Queen Anne's County Alcohol and Drug Abuse Services. Gary, thank you for being with us. My pleasure. Now tell us all about you guys. We are a part of the health department uh, located in Centerville uh, on uh, Liberty Street. We serve uh, the adult population at the present time for assessments uh, as well as referrals for substance use services. Uh, we can make referrals for adolescents in the community to other providers. Um, we can provide lots of information to families. So to there, parents. If people need help now, how do they contact you? Is there a phone number or a website? Or how, how they... Best phone number, 410-758-1306. you that one more time? 758-1306. Great, okay, thank I'll you very much. Okay? Thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm here with Steve from Chesapeake Treatment Services. Steve, thanks for being with us today. Uh, glad to be here. Now, glad tell to me be all here. about CTS. Uh, CTS has been open for about five weeks now. We're a um, medication-assisted treatment in Easton, uh, serving the mature, but anyone that uh, is available for our services could come. How we're 
different with the medication treatment services is that we have a strong um, counseling component um, to go along with that. Um, we start at 5.30 in the morning, so we're able to see people for their um, medication, we're able to see them for their sessions, they're able to go on to work, so we're trying to ease people back into recovery, into being stable, and not uh, complicate that. Great, sounds like so, great services. It is, now, it Steve, is. Steve, if they want to contact you, what's the best way? Best way to contact us, you can find us on Facebook, Chesapeake Treatment Services, uh, ChesapeakeTreatmentServices.com, uh, or you can look us up in the um, yellow pages or the white pages okay. uh, for Easton. Thanks for coming out and kind of a yucky night. Uh, it's super. Thanks for being here. Thank you, Steve. Take okay. care. Now, I'm here with Bonnie from the Parents Place of Maryland. Bonnie, thank you for being with us. Thank you for having me. Now, tell me all about the Parents Place of Maryland. The Parents Place of Maryland has been around for 25 years. This year, we're a nonprofit, federally funded, and we work solely with children with special health care needs and special education needs. So I serve the whole Eastern Shore, oh, sure. nine counties from my home in Queen Anne's County. You're and, a busy woman. Yes. And so I work one-on-one -on -one with the families to help educate them and to make sure the school system is supporting Providing the child the they and, and receive the services that they are entitled to Great. if they qualify. Now, Bonnie, if they want to contact you or the Parents Place of Maryland, how do they do that? They would call my office number, 410-928-2079. Okay, well, great. Well, thank you for coming out on a very strange night, by and the way. I, oh, go ahead, please. My other mission of being here is that I lost my son very sorry. last year, a week ago, who was a heroin addict, 20 years old, but he was in recovery. So that's my other passion. Of okay, so you can help parents help with that other, and families yes, with that. Exactly. Well, that's great that you're doing that. All, all right. right. I'm very sorry for your loss. Thank you. Thanks, Bob. Thanks. Okay. okay, now let's talk about the wellness connection. Tell us, how about introduce yourself and tell us all about it. Sure. I'm Iris Carter. I'm a nurse from Queen Anne's County Department of Health, and I coordinate our wellness connection. We're a school-based program, and we're in our middle schools and high schools in the county. We're there to provide health education to the students as well as community resources. And we're not only there for the students, but we're also there for families and staff. So if there is a community uh, resource that's needed, we can help refer them. Um, we don't provide any direct services, but we provide that linkage okay. for resources that are needed. Uh, if they want to contact you, say, hey, I, I, need, I need some linkage, all right? Mm -hmm. How do they do that? Um, they can call the health department. We're at 410-758-0720. ask for you? Or? And just ask for Iris Carter or one of the wellness nurses. Nurses, or if you'd like, I can provide you with one of our brochures. And if you would like to advertise that, it actually um, have what schools we're at and what day. Great. And I was, by the way, when you came before the Board of Ed, you always did a wonderful job. Oh, well, thank you. Okay. Well, thank, thank you, you very you. much. Thank you. Now I'm with Jay from the Talbot County Health Department. Jay, thanks for being with us tonight. Hi, thank you for having me. Now tell us all about the Talbot County Health Department. Well, the Health Department is located in Easton, Maryland. And myself, I work there in the capacity as a peer support person, uh, which is I am a recovering alcoholic and addict. And I work there at the health department as somebody that people coming in for help and treatment can speak to, someone that can maybe relate more on their level and uh, offer some support in that way. Um, one of the things that we're doing at our health department over the next uh, several months, the first Tuesday of every month, we're offering Narcan training. Narcan is a new uh, prescription drug that is being used to reverse opiate or heroin overdoses. And this training is being offered the first Tuesday of every month, starting next Tuesday, which is, I believe, October 6th. And it'll run from 5.30 to 7. It's free. Uh, Call our health department, 410-819-5600. Sign up. It's free. You might be able to save somebody's life. Uh, this is a wonderful thing. You'll leave the class with the actual prescription. Great, Jay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hi, 
I'm here with Tim and Alice from the Kent County Health Department. Tim, thanks for having us. Alice, great to see you tonight. Tim, tell us a little bit about the Kent County Health Department. Yes, uh, working for the, the Kent County Behavioral Health, I'm the director of the Outpatient Substance Abuse Program, uh, which is just a, a small linkage, a part of that system. We also have an outpatient uh, mental health clinic in the same building. We have the AF Whitsett Center, which is the inpatient program, which is about to expand beds from 24 beds to 40 beds, uh, thanks to Governor Hogan and the uh, the new funds, which we're very appreciative of, because of the huge opioid epidemic we're facing at this Sweeping point. Country, right? So, uh, and, and we have Alice Barkley, who also has the the uh, who's in charge of the crisis, crisis beds. beds. Yes, mental health crisis stabilization. We do a lot of co-occurring. Work closely with the Whitsett Center. We do, you know, they have to have a mental health crisis in order to get into our beds. We work with emergency room departments, health departments, hospitals to kind of shorten their stay at a higher level of care or prevent a higher level of care. Now, Tim and Alice, if people see this and say, hey, I've got a question or I need some help, who, who should they call and what are the numbers? Uh, we have two numbers, actually. Uh, the main number to the AF Whitsett Center uh, is 410-778-6404. And if you wish to be in touch about an admission process, you would ask for David Stant, who is in charge of admissions. If you're interested in getting in touch with directly for outpatient uh, substance abuse services, you can contact 410-778-2616, dial zero, and someone will be able to help you immediately. Thank you very much, and thank you, Tim. You're a brave man to watch me on TV. Oh, thank you so much. I'm here at the Sante, S-A-N-T-E table, and we're going to learn all about Sante. Fred, thanks so much for the opportunity. I'm Carol. I'm with Eastern Shore Crisis Response. We're a free mental health and substance use disorder crisis program that folks can access 24-7 by calling 888-407-8018. Why don't you do that number again? 888-407-8018. 24-7. We have staff available to help folks who might be in crisis. And from 9 a.m. to midnight, we actually have clinicians who go out to the person who's experiencing the crisis to help the crisis get stabilized and linked up with community resources so that folks can safely stay in the community. Great service and thank you all thank for you. that great service. Thank, thank you. you very much. Now we're here at the CRF table. Let's find out what in the world CRF is. The CRF is a cigarette restitution fund program, and we receive funding from DHMH, which is the Department of Health and Mental Hygiene, and that's where the states um, sued the tobacco companies, and the monies that we receive, we put it into the cigarette restitution fund program, and we have different components. We have this um, community component, school component, enforcement component, and cessation component, where we do things, tobacco prevention, getting the word out about tobacco. Okay, sounds like great. Now, if someone says, hey, I'm interested in that, I want more information. How do they get it? They can call me at 443-262. Tell them who me is. Make sure they Yes, know. they can call me, Doreen Fassett, at 443-262-4424. And we offer free help to quit smoking, the Chantix, and the patches free of charge. The only thing is you have to be a Queen Anne's County resident. Thank you, Doreen. Let's do that number, though, one more time before we go. 443-262-4424. Thank you very much. You're welcome. I'm here with Michelle from the Maryland Children's Health Program. Michelle, thank you for being with us tonight. You're welcome. You're welcome. I'm going to let the secret out. All the coffee is hidden behind. That's right. It okay. smells great this quarter. Michelle, tell me about the Maryland Children's Health Program. The Maryland Children's Health Program is actually Maryland Medicaid, and we're located at the Queen Anne's County Health Department. It's an online process now through the MarylandHealthConnection.gov. But if folks are having trouble getting through it themselves, we welcome them to call us and make an appointment, and they can come in and sit with a case manager and help to get that case through. And Michelle, if they want to, it sounds great. What number should they call? Um, the main number is 410-758. Uh, zero two or zero seven two zero. That's okay. Um, and there's a, a receptionist that'll help them get to the case manager. Ask for you or just ask for a case manager. Ask for one of the case managers for health. Okay, insurance. let's do that number one more time. Seven five eight zero seven two zero. Now we can have coffee. That's right. Okay, I'm here now with Ann from the Ross Center. Ann, tell me all about the Ross Center. We provide mental health and addiction services for clients um, in the Caroline County area, and there's very few resources for families in that area, so we do provide. Um, we also see people outside of the county, but Caroline County is in the real need of those services, and that's what we're providing right now. Now, if they want to get in touch with you, how do they do it? I have a business card right here, and 
and um, there is a phone number on here as well that they can get in touch with us and get okay. scheduled. It's a very quick process. It's within 24 hours they can be able to see a counselor. And you have a website, so they just type in yes, Ross Sale. Yes, we do. And thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay, Linda, you got some uh, exciting news besides the bullying campaign. You want to tell us about a guest speaker we have in the county? Yes. To um, lead off our Unity Day week next week, um, we have Phil Chalmers in town this week, um, Thursday and Friday. Today he did um, a school assembly at Southersville Middle School, and tomorrow morning he will be at Centerville Middle, and in the afternoon at Manapeak Middle School. Well, thank you, and welcome Thanks to so Queen Anne's County. Now, tell me, what are you speaking about when you speak to the kids? Yeah, we're first of all, we're glad to be here, and we, we appreciate the invitation. We uh, speak to the kids about destructive decisions, uh, drugs, drunk driving, bullying, all the issues that kids are facing today. The, the number one goal is to make schools a safer place for kids, and that's what we're trying to do. Well, great. Well, thank you for coming to Queen Anne's County, and enjoy our stay. And I just heard the hurricane's not coming now, so it's going to get better. Great. Awesome. Thank you all. Thank, thank you, Linda. You. Hi, I'm here now with the Corsica River Mental Health services station with Dominique. Dominique, thank you for being with us. Thank you. And tell us all about the Corsica River Mental Health Services. Well, Corsica River Mental Health Services, we provide outpatient mental health services in both Centerville, um, Cambridge, and St. Michael's. Um, we are providing school services as well, so in Queen Anne's and Dorchester. And we are starting to get into substance use disorder services. We've always handled uh, co-occurring, which is mental health and some substance use issues, but now we're also just getting getting into strictly substance use services. Okay. Now, Dominic, if someone wants to contact the Corsica River Mental Health Services, how do they do that? Uh, they can do that by phone. Our phone number is 410-758-2211. Um, they can also come in and... Is there a uh, website they can go to, too? There okay. is. Don't worry about that. They can just type yep. in Corsica River Mental Health Services. That is correct, yes. All right. All right. Okay. yes. Well, thank you very much. Thank you so much. Now, I'm here with Latasha from the Problem Solving Courts. Latasha, tell us what Problem Solving Courts is. Problem Solving Courts is basically a program with, under the design of the state of Maryland judiciary and Problem Solving Courts focuses on specialty courts such as drug courts, mental health courts, truancy courts, um, family dependency courts and things of that nature to work with the individual who has a criminal activity within the judiciary system and we offer an alternative to sentencing and basically when a person comes into drug court they have the ability to work with a drug treatment team okay. and within this team you have a district court or circuit court judge you have a state's attorney office representative a representative from the office of public defender or the attorney that's working with them um, you have representatives from the local department of social services parole and probation uh, the health department so you're working as a team to try to help an individual out. That's, that's correct. And we have also local law enforcement officers who sit on our team who, um, as, as far as a participant in the drug court program, have curfews associated with their participation in drug court. And the local law enforcement officers will actually go to the individual's home um, based upon their curfew and check to see if they're there. And with that report, report back to the team if they're compliant or not. And what the drug court does is have biweekly reviews in front of the judge who uh, focuses on the person's progress within two weeks or so. Um, however, the reviews are held if it's bi-weekly or weekly. And within this review, uh, the judge will focus on their treatment session um, progress. If they're clean, low and sober if their tests are coming back negative, um, if they're compliant with the conditions set by parole probation, as well as um, conditions in compliance with their substance abuse treatment and their case management. So it's very hands-on. Sounds like a wonderful service. Yes, it is. It's very hands-on, very um, involved, and, and we help the, the individual along in their progress as far as uh, drug court goes. And the carrot with this, of course, is if an individual who graduates from the drug court program to have an opportunity to graduate with a conviction not being on their record. They have an opportunity to graduate with having a probation before judgment or if it's a case that comes in under the violation of probation uh, sector then of course you can hopefully have a, a, a budget, um, I'm sorry, a modification um, to your, your sentence and you know, okay. have Sounds a better terrific. opportunity right. yeah. to reconnect within the community. So it's now, a great resource. If people are listening and watching this, who do they contact? Is there a number they can call? Or how do they get in touch with you all? 
Well, for my county, I'm a representative for Dorchester County District Court, and you can contact me. Uh, my name again is Latasha Nichols. You can contact me at 410-901-1427, um, and I can answer any of your questions, or you can send me an email, uh, latasha.nichols at mdcourts.gov. Well, Latasha, thank you very much. You're welcome. Now we're here at the East of the Bay Narcotics Anonymous table. We want you to know they have services, and number is 1-800-317-3222. If you want more information, you can find the Queen Anne's County Drug-Free Coalition on Facebook. And thank you for watching QAC-TV.